for many, many years, I had a very strong belief that the truth was out there. Any X-Files fans? Well, by out there, I mean libraries, bookstores, graduate degrees, certifications. I was a complete nerd, a perpetual student, always trying to fix myself by learning more. There were advantages to that belief that the answers were all out there in books because I learned a lot. I was rewarded in some big ways and many small for knowing a lot of stuff. My family will tell you I have a major in trivia. But every time there's a big breakthrough, a big change, some real accomplishment, it's because I took the call. You know that call? The call that's coming from inside the house. Hello, veg heads. You're listening to Veg Your Best, the plant based podcast. My name is Michelle Olander. I'm a certified life coach, a practicing vegan, and I'm here to try and convince you to show up, eat more plants, and not wait a single second longer to set an impossible goal, whatever that is for you. Episode eight, where we ask, is the truth really out there? Last week in episode seven, we talked about getting clear on what we're thinking. Because if we're having trouble doing something or accomplishing something, there is something going on in our brain, like a thought or belief that is at odds with the new goal. We don't need a new plan, a new diet, a new book. They can be useful, but not until we see what the thoughts are inside of our brains that are just operating and going unquestioned. Last week, we talked about the process of uncovering the thoughts that are keeping us stuck. And if you haven't listened to episode seven, what are you thinking? That's the title of the episode. What are you thinking? I think it would make more sense to listen to that first, but in a nutshell, if there are results that you keep creating in your life that you don't want, that's the first clue that you are thinking a thought or thoughts that are not serving you. Thoughts that are not serving your goals and your intentions. Last week, I mentioned that sometimes just learning what the thought is that is keeping you stuck can be enough to really wake us up. That's what I mean. The call is coming from inside the house. You can try on any number of plans and new ideas, and they will work for a bit because you think, well, that's it. The truth is out there. It's in, in this book or that plan or that video series. But if the truth you're telling yourself inside your brain is, I usually give up. I have no follow through. It's easier for other people. I don't like lots of rules. Well, then that is where the work is. The messages inside your brain inside the house. But it's so important not to blame yourself for those thoughts because when we start to blame ourselves, we call ourselves lazy or broken or somehow intrinsically incapable. We just give ourselves more evidence to feel helpless, to feel like that's true, we can't change. And all of this, it's just a habit of thought. Your brain likes habits. Your brain likes easy. And not just your brain, everyone's brain, my brain, human brains. They like to avoid pain. They seek pleasure and they make it as easy to repeat as possible. So that's what we discussed in the last episode. An example, you decide that you want to cut down on eating animal products but 
you keep eating meat or cheese or eggs, well, that's a clue that you may be thinking some other thought, like, it's too hard for me to go plant-based, or I don't really have time to learn to cook vegan meals, or everyone else in the family wants to eat meat. I don't want to think so much about what I eat. And as we said last week, just realizing that those thoughts are actually creating the result of eating foods we say that we don't want to eat, well, that can often be enough for us to get super curious and compassionate with ourselves. Listen, it's not that going vegan is so hard. It's not that cooking plant-based is so hard. It's not that others don't want to eat the same way with us. It's that our brain always lobbies for staying the same. That's just what your brain does. Evolutionarily, you're not a slug. Your brain is the product of countless generations of natural selection. Your brain is just trying to keep you where you are because staying the same seems safer and easier than growing and changing. And one of the truly spectacular habits our brain has is selectively seeking evidence to support whatever beliefs we have. I don't know if you've heard of him yet, but science journalist Eric Vance in his book, Suggestible You, the curious science of your brain's ability to deceive, transform, and heal. Long title. Eric Vance writes about the way our human brain is very selective in the way it chooses to notice evidence in the world that reinforces the thoughts it already has. So here's a quote from Eric Vance's Suggestible You. Simply put, your brain doesn't want to be wrong. And in order for expectation to match reality, your brain is willing to bend a few rules or even cheat outright. Your brain's expectations are more powerful than we ever imagined. And when those expectations clash with reality, more often than not, it's your stubborn brain that wins. End of quote. But the good news is that once you get that your stubborn brain does that, you can just say, thanks, brain. I see you are using a few hundred thousand years of evolution and natural selection to try and protect me. But I actually know that I can change my thoughts. What's keeping you stuck is just that sweet, well-intentioned, prehistoric, stubborn brain of yours. But how do we change those thoughts that our brain is holding on to with such ferocity? Well, first, we just notice that stubborn thought we want to change. Check. And then we start to think about the thought we would like to have. Let's use an example. I'd like to have the thought, maybe you're thinking, I'd like to have the thought, I eat plant-based because I think it's healthier for me and the planet. And so now we keep practicing that thought. Yes, but how easy is it to believe that your thoughts are within your day-to-day control? Not super easy when we are in the thick of belief. Because as Eric Vance says, Our brain is very good at hiding those thoughts. Without a practice of real inquiry, we don't always recognize those beliefs. So you need to give yourself permission to believe something other than what you currently believe. And you stop looking at the evidence you see outside because a lot of that so-called evidence that you have is your brain trying to distract you. Your brain is trying to prove what you believe correct right now. We all know this, right? The confirmation bias. That's our tendency as humans to seek, interpret, favor, 
and remember information in a way that confirms our prior thoughts, our personal beliefs. It's a very common type of cognitive bias, and it's even stronger for emotionally charged topics and deeply ingrained beliefs. Food, how we eat, for most humans that are having trouble with their choices, these are emotionally charged topics, and they are deeply ingrained. Our brains can sift through, well, they say billions of bits of data at any given time. And somehow, so we don't short circuit, we have to organize that information in our brains completely automatically. They call it the reticular activating system that helps with that. The reticular activating system, RAS, it's a bundle of nerves at our brainstem that filters information so that what we currently believe is the important stuff gets through to us. That's why you can drive from one place to another now without thinking about every single detail of the car, the pedals, the traffic, the signs, the new stores, the music on the radio, what someone's wearing on the side of the road. The reticular activating system is the reason you learn a new word and then start hearing it everywhere. It's why you can tune out a crowd full of talking people, yet immediately snap to attention when someone says your name or something that sounds like it. Your reticular activating system takes what you focus on and creates a filter for it. It then sifts through the data and presents primarily the pieces that are important to you. And all of this happens without you noticing, of course. The RAS programs itself to work in what your brain has decided is your favor without you actively doing anything. In the same way, this system seeks information that validates your beliefs. It filters the world through the parameters you give it, and your beliefs shape those parameters. And if you think you're bad at sticking with a new diet, well, you probably will be. If you believe you're good with languages, you most likely are. The RAS, the reticular activating system in your brain, helps you see what you want to see. And in doing so, it influences your actions. And of course, those actions change the results. If your brain thinks not eating animal products will annoy your friends and family, it will emphasize moments that support that idea of your vegan diet annoying your friends and family. And it will de-emphasize situations where everyone's just delighted that you're eating so many fruits, veggies, grains, and legumes. <laughs> so while we're still talking science, let's talk about what a thought is. Before you try and change one, what is it? A thought is just two neurons in your brain connecting. The more you think a particular thought, like, this is too hard for me, the stronger the connection between those neurons gets. That connection is called a neural pathway. It's like a groove or a road in your brain. The more you think a thought, the stronger that neural pathway gets, the more defined the groove in your brain. The classic example is a road across a field. The first time you try and drive a vehicle across an unused field, there's no pathway, there's no road. There is only your thought that you're gonna get in your vehicle, your truck, and cross the field. And there are bumps, clumps of trees, groupings of rocks, things you need to go around. And it's just you making a lot of decisions about where to turn or to avoid something or stopping and putting the truck into reverse and getting a little more momentum to get through a muddy part or a little thicket. Well, the second time you cross the field, you can see where you went and where the vegetation is broken down a bit. And you can try to just 
follow along and cross the field, this time a good bit faster than the first time you crossed. By the 100th time you've crossed the field, there is an obvious trail or even a dirt road now, so you can get from one side of the meadow to the other pretty fast. It's not that it's the absolute best route across the field, but it is the one you've practiced. This is like the neural pathway in your brain, getting more and more defined each time you think a certain thought, each time getting more efficient. You might have a thought that is super believable to you, like, well, I always start things, but I don't finish. Or, I don't know what I'm doing. Most likely, if you think those thoughts are pretty correct, pretty true, well, it's only that it's a thought you've been practicing for years. That's the only reason it feels like truth. You've thought that thought and connected those neurons and practiced that connection a bunch of times. So the neural pathway is very defined and you've collected lots of evidence that prove that thought. If you try driving the truck just to the side of that path across the meadow or the field where all the vegetation is still rough and overgrown, well, you'd probably find the truck sort of wobbling back right into the pathway that you had made. It would be quite hard, so much harder, to drive on the edge of the road or off the road. Harder, tiring, but only until you did what you did with the first road, that first thought. You decided to just keep going on that new road you want. You practice a new thought. You drive on the rough new route. What's the way to create that new road or new neural pathway as your go-to? Well, it's simply to keep driving on it. Decide that you are making a new road and you do it. If you want to think and believe something new, literally all you have to do is keep thinking it over and over. Keep practicing the thought. Keep driving across that field on a new route. And if you think that sounds like brainwashing, you're right. Most of us are brainwashing ourselves day in and day out with reasons change is going to be impossible for us, or it will just disappoint us in the long run, or it's not worth the effort. Did you know that there's no law against brainwashing ourselves with thoughts and ideas that allow us to have extraordinary lives full of change and transformation? <laughs> to create a new belief, your only job is to keep connecting those neurons and building a strong neural pathway, knowing that, yes, it's hard and awkward, and it seems like a waste of time at first, but also knowing logically through experience that, yes, it gets easier, but only if you keep at it. It's not easier to create a new path across the field if you only do it once a month or 10 times in a row, and then you don't drive it again for the rest of the summer. Is this analogy working for you? There will be times, there will be times you don't think this is working or you don't believe it. And I'd like you to trust me that this is just because you haven't practiced enough or you got distracted when it was challenging or hard and you gave up. You decided it was tiring and you decided to drive on the old road across the meadow that you created years ago, decades ago. Last week, we talked about how I never believed I would be podcasting or before that, that I would be a practicing vegan. I also never believed I would become a certified life coach or spend a year and hundreds of hours coaching and studying and then writing a coaching methodology for people who want to move to a plant-based diet. 10 years ago, if you asked me whether 
any of those things were in my future, I would have said, of course not. So how do we practice that new belief? First of all, do yourself a favor and just pick one new belief. And pro tip, it doesn't matter what you choose, because if you do the work, if you practice the new belief, the fallout will be you becoming more intentional and deliberate in many areas. It's so counterintuitive, but the more areas you think you should change, the more essential it is that you pick only one. So, if you're listening, pick it now. What is it? For me, five years ago or more, the thought I began with was something like, A whole food, plant-based vegan diet is better for me and for the planet. I repeated that a lot. But yours could be anything. Making money is more fun than spending money. Or I choose foods for nutrition, not for entertainment. Another thought could be, I can be vegan whether or not my spouse is vegan. Give yourself permission to believe something that is a little outside of what seems possible. If your current belief is that you are undisciplined and it seems just too much to say, I am disciplined with my food choices, that's okay. It's fine to say, I'm getting more and more disciplined or I'm learning new ways to be disciplined or I'm noticing the ways I am disciplined. There are no thought police. Not yet. You can think any wonderful thing about you and your life. And I suggest you do. But if it's an area where you have some resistance, some old beliefs where your brain always shows you evidence to support your old crappy beliefs, you will need to practice believing on purpose. So think the new thought as many times as you can, every day. Connect those neurons. Build that neural pathway. And pretty soon you will have a new trail, a new road, a new superhighway in your brain while that previous thought road starts to get overgrown and neglected with disuse. If you have a new thought that you'd like to believe, I would love to help you with that. Every week, I keep four 45-minute free sessions open to work with anyone who would like to see how coaching can help. Absolutely free. Let's talk this week about how to give yourself permission to believe something amazing about yourself. What do you want to believe? Maybe like me, you tend to think the truth is out there in a book or a video or an online course. Those are all great sources of information. But even the Stoic philosopher Epictetus cautioned us about external sources. Did you hear that? We have a new Stoic sound effect as of last week. Do you like it? So Epictetus wrote, books are the training weights of the mind. They are very helpful, but it would be a bad mistake to suppose that one has made progress simply by having internalized their contents. Epictetus. There's good stuff to learn out there, and lots of it. But the best news is that to make real progress, that's an inside job. Pick up the line. That call is coming from inside the house. If you're curious how doing this work with a coach can help you, with your plant-based goals, email me or sign up for one of the free 45-minute phone calls or Zoom calls. The link is in the show notes. Together, let's see if we can get you going on your way to whatever goal you've got. You know, sometimes you guys tell me that you have to accomplish something else before you can move to something plant-based. I hear that a lot. So we can talk about whatever you want, whatever goal you want. 
Read Your Best podcast production, music, and editing by Charlie Weinshank. Thanks, Charlie. Before you go, it would mean so much to me and the Veg Your Best team if you would hit subscribe, leave us a five-star review, or share with someone you think might be interested. Something about algorithms, it helps bump us up a little in the rankings, and that's the best way to help others find the podcast and for us to find our audience. So until next week, make it easy and veg your best.